this is Wandering Scholars speaking and welcome to Helsinki Airport. Today I am once again flying Finnair to Asia and having landed from London Heathrow, I found myself inside the non-Schengen departure zone of Helsinki Airport. Ever since the Ukraine war and Russian airspace blockade, Finnair has suffered substantial losses on its Asian flights making what used to be the shortest route between Europe and Asia among one of the longest. Helsinki renovated its terminal in anticipation of the post-pandemic pent-up demand, but the nowhere-to-be-seen Asian tourists have now become a nightmare for the airport concessions. 9pm used to be a peak departure bank for Helsinki Airport, but in 2023 it's utterly deserted at this hour. The decimation of the carrier's Asian route further diluted the lounge experience. I have been a Finnair Platinum member since 2021, and believe it or not, I have never once enjoyed the so-called Platinum Wing because it was closed every time when I visited. The Finnair Lounge in the Nunshengen Departure Zone boasts a living room style design featuring cosy sofas and armchairs with a Nordic flair. It is a windowless space in the terminal accommodating up to 450 passengers at any time. The centerpiece of the lounge is a circular bar parallel to the buffet counters. You may get made to order drinks as well as champagne and other beverages should you wish. After quenching my thirst with a few sips of the Campari Spritz, I decided to check out the buffet selections. There is certainly a plethora of alcohol all over this lounge, and unfortunately it seems that is where all the budget went. The food buffet is dominated by exclusively root vegetables and starch. Speaking of alcohol, there are even two whiskey barrels in collaboration with a loco distillery. On my way out, I passed by the private shower facilities with an automated booking system. The Finnair Lounge at Helsinki is a thoughtfully designed space with reasonable beverage options. While this is not a place you would want to arrive early for, it's perfectly enjoyable for a two hours connection. Today I will be flying on board an Airbus A350 with Finnair's latest business class cabin that was launched in 2022. The boarding process is slightly unorganized as is the norm with many European airports where all passengers are ushered into a confined gate space before being allowed to board. It's interesting to observe how colorful tonight's crowd is, quite a contrast from an otherwise cold and bleak February in Helsinki. The air lounge business class is configured in a one to one layout with a total of 43 seats spread across two cabins. Finnair has multiple configurations of A350s, with anywhere between 30 to 46 business class seats, depending on the aircraft. The single window side seat is always my preference, and today I assigned myself to Alpha, the bulkhead seat in the forward cabin. The seat is upholstered in a dark navy fabric with no reclining function. The bulkhead row for the new air lounge seat offers visibly more foot space than the rest which makes a huge difference when it comes to time to sleep. Finnair Singapore flights are operated by Singapore-based crew, which from my personal experience is much more diligent than their European counterparts. So here is where you find your headset, and the, this is the part of the headset. USB charging if you need. And then we also have wireless tabletop mm -hmm. charging if right. your equipment is okay. have that. Mm -hmm. You want to hold on to this, okay? So, small items like yes. this, plus that, mm -hmm. can be stored Perfect. inside Perfect. here. Perfect. Which you also find a bottle of uh, water, water in there. Okay. 
Finnair's partnership with Finnish brand Marimekko and Itala is the defining element of this Scandinavian carrier. It truly imbues a unique brand identity. Very flavoured gin oh, liqueur, yeah. So it's different from the right, white yeah, one that you can normally yeah. use. Yeah. This one, the oh, lemon liqueurs, or under the seat in front of you. Of the yeah, the front. Now, going back to the seat that does not recline, it actually felt quite comfortable during boarding as the seat naturally has a built-in recline, so you are not sitting upright during takeoff and taxiing, which can be a treat when it takes an hour to de-ice and prepare an A350 in the Helsinki winter. I wasn't exaggerating when I said de-icing takes an hour. This must be the highest amount of snow accumulation I have ever seen in my life. Hot towel was served shortly after takeoff as we bid farewell to the frozen ground. It is now the time for the orchestra to begin. Finnair introduced a new food service protocol during COVID and everything is very different from when I first travelled with the airline in 2017. The greatest regret from this service enhancement must be the elimination of course-by-course -course service. But the food quality on Helsinki outbound flights is still top-notch. It wasn't long after when the cabin turned dark for some slumber ahead of a 13 hours journey across Eurasia. This seat converts into a bed position by raising its footrest to connect with the seat cushion and the ottoman. The width provided very decent lateral movement in lie flat position. Nowadays I do miss those Finnair flights before the Ukraine war when you basically arrive anywhere in Asia for under 10 hours. But in this day and age, the great detour is adding an extra three and a half hours to the same journey. The galley was very quiet during the flight, but the cabin crew was very responsive to any call button requests. I was offered drinks by one of the crew when they saw me awake, and the tea I ordered was also followed by a fruit bowl. While the shell seat is great when you are sitting up, it is not exactly versatile for lounging purposes. I couldn't really adjust the position of how I was seated and that was uncomfortable when I worked 3 hours straight on my laptop. 
After attempting various postures to make myself comfortable, for the remainder of the flight, the cabin light was reignited for the second and final meal service of this 13 hours journey. The breakfast has a generous portion relative to dinner and while all the dishes are rather rudimentary, it was a perfectly fulfilling airplane breakfast. Sitting in the bulkhead seat is always a pleasure to expedite the meal service and more importantly getting your preferred choice of meal. Finnair's food and beverage program is nowhere near the world's finest, but it is perfectly alright relative to its European counterpart. Quality control, however, varies significantly depending on the port of departure. I had a horrific experience when flying out of Shanghai earlier this year, which makes the Helsinki catered meal today a pleasant surprise. Having spent 13 and a half hours on Finnair's latest business class product, I think it is safe as to say that Finnair is really a different airline now than what it used to be before Covid. While the hallmarks of the Scandinavian branding remains at Finnair, just about everything else from their routes and value proposition have fundamentally changed. At the time of editing this video, Finnair announced a new round of cost cuts containing a devaluation of loyalty program redemption rates, loyalty perks and implemented a near punitive seat assignment policy. The untimely Russian airspace blockade is continuing to cast its devastation on Finnair. As we approach Singapore Chanyu Airport, I can't help but wonder that this may be my final Finnair flight in the foreseeable future as there are ever fewer reasons to choose Finnair over its One World counterparts. It has been a pleasure and I can't wait for our next departure. Thank you for watching this Wandering Scholar video.